Good morning. Good morning. All right. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for a special story time in honor of the Big Draw Festival 2021. The theme is Make the Change. My name is Maya Colbert, and I'm the Public Programs Coordinator at the Walt Disney Family Museum. Today, we will hear the story, I Am Farmer, Growing an Environmental Movement in Cameroon, by Miranda and Baptiste Paul, read by real, the real-life hero of the book, Farmer Tanto and Forba. Farmer Tanto will read his amazing book to us and share the story of how he got started working to bring clean water and sustainable farming practices to people all around the world. After that, we will turn things over to you, our audience, to submit questions using the QA feature in Zoom platform. Please make sure to submit all questions to the QA section, which should be at the bottom middle of the Zoom screen. We won't be answering questions in the chat function. If you find the chat distracting, you can minimize it on your screen so that it's not visible. Before I introduce Farmer Tonto, I want you to know that we have appreciated your support during our closure and hope you've had a chance to enjoy our many virtual offerings that we've announced. More are coming soon, including additional guests for Happily Ever After Hours and special virtual educational offerings. Be sure you are signed up for our e-news and join us on social media to get the latest updates. Your support helps keep these virtual programs going, so consider becoming a member at WaltDisney.org slash membership or consider a donation at WaltDisney.org slash donate. And now, without further ado, all the way from his home in Cameroon, this is Farmer Tonto. Good morning, everyone. So I'm going to read my story. I am farmer growing an environmental movement in Cameroon. So that is me, Farmer Tanto in the middle, and you have Miranda and, and Baptist Paul. They are the authors of my book based in Wisconsin. And that's my grandmother. I grew up with her when I was a little boy. And that is me with my banana trees when I planted when I was eight years old. That's a signpost about water slogans in my garden in the village. And that's how my village looks like in the dry season where it is rough and dusty. So I'm going to read to you my story. This is Northwestern Cameroon, green, wet, alive. The rainy season has begun. A young boy arrives at his grandmother's farm. His feet squish between rows of cabbage and beans. His small hands plunge into the dirt. And she, oh, Tanto. His father laughs. His grandmother laughs too. They do not stop him, they understand his joy. Tanto rummages through grandmother's market basket. A sharp smell fills the air, onions. He wonders if he can grow them by himself. He sneaks them under a banana tree. Each day, when he checks on his secret garden, the greens have shriveled a bit more. Eventually, the bulbs dry up. Why won't they grow, Marco? He asks his grandmother. They need sunlight and air, she says, and most importantly, water. She explains that nature has its own ways of working. Tanto wants to learn more. He wants to learn everything. When he begins school, Tanto drinks up facts and figures faster than his teacher can pour them on the chalkboard. His hand shoots up like a corn stalk. Teachers frown. Too many questions. Students giggle. What's so interesting about plants and dirt and weather? As a teenager, 
Tanto is still fascinated by nature. Tanto's father is sick, but he finds a way to buy his son a shovel and other gardening supplies. Tanto uses these tools every day and keeps record books of the seeds he's planted and how long each one takes to grow. He shows his biology teacher, Mr. Ken, his records. His classmates give him a nickname, Farmer. It is not a nice name. It is a name that is meant to make him feel as low as the death beneath his feet. But Tanto loves the dirt. He loves the texture of roots. He loves the smell of dark, wet soil. He loves the corn it can grow and the fufu it provides for his brothers and sisters, especially now that his father is dying. One morning, he makes a new school uniform. He puts big letters on the front, farmer. Tanto wears the shirt to school for the rest of high school. His elder brother shakes his head. Farmers are very poor. His brother urges him to dwell on a special upcoming exam so he can provide for the family. If you get good marks, you can work in an office, be a police officer or a teacher. On the day of his exams, Tanto considers his brother's advice. Their father has died and his brother is now the head of the family. Tanto fills in the correct answers the ones that will get him a good pain of his job. Before he hands in his exam, he wipes dust off his decks, dust that reminds him how dry the land can be. His own mother and neighbors walk far to get clean water and struggle to grow enough food. He imagines himself away from them and stuck inside an office. He crosses out his answers and hands in his paper. He signs it F for farmer. His teacher returns it F for fail. His days at high school are over. So the land in his village of Nkambe becomes his classroom. He spends his days and sometimes nights digging, planting, reading, axing. Even Mr. Ken, who lives nearby, can't answer all of Farmer Tanto's questions. As he walks, Farmer Tanto meets others who share his love for the land and water. One of the people he meets recognizes how important his love of farming is and provides money to send him to college. Tanto will be able to study the environment and agriculture at a local school. Finally, his classmates and teachers will praise him for talking about the weather, learning about water and playing with the soil. At college, Pamatanto is tested to learn everything he can. Although he soaks up plenty of facts and figures, clean water is still scarce. He contracts typhoid from drinking the local water. He is so sick, he worries he may not live long enough to graduate. For seven years, medical doctors and local healers used their knowledge, medicines, and herbs to make Pharmatanto feel better. During his, rec his recovery, he thinks a lot about his future and the future of his fellow Cameroonians. No one should die from drinking something that is necessary for life, water. After he is better, Famatanto gets a chance to continue his studies in the United States. There, he finds out about new ways to save the rain, find clean underground water, and grow gardens and crops without poisoning the soil and wells. Back in Cameroon, Famatanto is eager to use what he has learned. People are still getting sick because they don't have clean water. And when the dry season comes, there is hunger and drought. How can he help his people? Resources are limited. 
Most villages don't have tractors, motorized tillers, or irrigation systems to bring water to, to fields. Some don't even have roads. Farmer Tanto creates a motto to help motivate himself and others. When you don't have what you want, use what you have. Why he doesn't have much, he does have people. Tanto gathers children and teenagers to join him in the fields. Some laugh at him, others shake their heads, but others grab a shovel or hoe. Together, they build botanical gardens and rain gardens that will hold water in the soil. These areas produce food or flowers all year long and provide green spaces to reconnect people with nature. The mayor of his home village in Kambe is impressed. Eventually, the mayor promises to make sure the garden stays beautiful for years to come. By now, everyone in Northwest Cameroon is calling Tanto farmer and they say it with pride. In the Fulani village of Aqueto, Tanto learns that people are drinking from the same stream as their cattle. The water contains harmful bacteria and many children are getting sick and dying. Tanto helps the villagers locate a clean spring, but they don't have money for equipment and laborers to build a catchment that can hold the water. Abiyungir, Tanto says, it is a limbum phrase for community, meaning unity is strength. He translates into Fulani so that everyone in the village understands. Young and old, everyone in Aguito pitches in to clear a path or carry stones. Together, they construct a catchment to capture the spring water. Before long, the entire village has creeps clean water flowing year round. Two years later, a grandfather would tell Farmer Tanto that since drinking the new water, not one of his neighbors or grandchildren has gotten sick or complained of a stomach ache. One project leads to another and another. Famatanto found Save Your Future Association, a nonprofit organization to which people around the world can donate money and supplies. With local and international support, he finds a way to bring clean water to Njirong, a village suffering after a 30 year conflict. He begins a water delivery service for blind students. He hires engineers to design stairways, railings, or ramps for villagers with physical disabilities. In places with large populations, communities build reservoirs so that in times of drought, people can get the water they need. So that is my truck, and that is a picture of a railing that we built. If you don't have what you want, use what you have. <laughs> Today, this is not Western Cameroon. Sometimes wet, sometimes dry, but always very alive. Today, Famatanto does not work alone. A stream of hands works to find fresh, clean water. A trickle of hope runs through many villages and a crop of young farmers who are proud to be farmers are digging in, planting ideas and growing a movement. So how do you grow a movement? You need to start small because I believe that from small things, big things grow. That's my first vegetable garden in 1996 when I was a student in high school. I was experimenting with garlic and I had to try new things because people have never seen garlic in my village. I raised animals for fertilizers and income. Oh, it's such a cute bunny. 
So I grew a lot of vegetables to sell, to generate income for myself and to have nutritious vegetables and to sell some. Um, Farmer Tonto on the left, what kind of vegetables are these? Are these cabbage? Yeah, those are cabbages and green beans. Very cool. So I use local means to irrigate. If you don't have what you want, use what you have. I started a movement to train children so that when they grow old, they will not depart from it. And they started growing their own vegetables. That cabbage is so big, that's so impressive. And I started an, a garden in my village when I founded Save Your Future Association. And the garden was evolving. And since I was talking about Africa, I could design an African map with flowers. That's beautiful. Wow, that's such a big difference. So this is how the garden looked like in 2012. And we still have a lot of work to be done in the garden. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you so much for sharing your story with us, Farmer Tonto. And um, just an extra big thank you to you for being here with us today. I know you've been having some issues with the power where you are. And that's why it's a little dark right now for our audience, but Farmer Tonto is such a trooper. He's still um, working with us and did his best to make sure that his phone was charged so he could be with us today. All right, so if we're ready, I think we have our first question. And that is your first experiment with growing food was planting some onions your grandmother brought you from the market as a child. What is your favorite thing to grow in your garden now? So the favorite thing I'm growing now is still vegetables in my garden because we need a lot of vegetables to stay healthy. So I'm growing a lot of carrots and green peppers right now in my garden. Awesome. I really love gardening vegetables too. It's one of my favorite things to do and it helps give me ideas for cooking. Um, you've done a lot of important work to bring clean, reliable water to communities that need it. Is there something small that your average person can do to protect their local water sources? Sorry? Um, is there something that um, just a normal person could do if they want to make sure that their water sources stay clean? Yeah, it's just that a lot of people are ignorant of the fact that they can't do the work by themselves. And that is why I am there to create a lot of awareness that with community efforts, we can be able to harness and protect our water sources by ourselves without necessarily waiting for government support or politician support. We can do the things by ourselves because like John F. Kennedy said in the 60s, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. Definitely. Okay, um, we have a question from um, an anonymous viewer. Um, do you have children that have your passion and will be helping you with your projects? Oh yeah, I have three boys, uh, nine, seven, and five. Oh and just, just one of them is really developing a lot of interest, a lot of passion in, in what I'm doing. And my wife also is so supportive. And you know, so I just believe that one of my child shall continue my legacy even when I'm not there. Mm -hmm. Yes, we need more farmers, definitely. Okay, um, another question from Anonymous. Um, does your, your Save Your Future Association have a website and information on how people can support your efforts? Oh yeah, I have a website, www.syfaglobal.org. And uh, Save Your Future Association is recognized as a 501c nonprofit status in America. And we are in the process of transitioning from Save Your Future Association to Famatantos Foundation. So the board of directors in, in America, they are working on that and it will soon be Famatantos Foundation. And we are on the paperwork now and it will be both in America and in Cameroon. 
So we have a website that we can share to people for now. That's awesome. And I did include the link for that website in our follow-up email that everyone who attended this program will be getting today. So if you didn't have a chance to take down that URL, it will be in the follow-up email. All right, next question. Um, you took a name, Farmer, that your classmates used to tease you and you made it something to be proud of. What advice would you give to young people experiencing bullying or name calling? Yeah, so my advice is that everybody in this world was born with an instinct, with an ability to do something. There are no boring jobs in this world. It's just that at times young people get bored because they want quick results. So I want to change the narratives of how young people see their careers. When you believe in something, you just have to go with it, no matter what people will say, because the obstacles that you face in life is like a stepping stone to make you achieve your dreams. That's beautiful. We definitely need all kinds of jobs in the world. And I think the pandemic has shown us that a lot of jobs that we didn't think of as important because you, didn't, you don't make a lot of money or get famous are essential. We definitely need all of our workers. Okay, this question is from Jaren. Have you experienced conflict with wildlife while farming? If so, what solutions have you tried to save both your crops and coexist with that wildlife? Yeah, in, in my culture, we have a lot of issues with uh, farmer graziers conflict, a lot of graziers who have cattle and then the infringing farms. So I always like try to encourage the communities on how we can do fencing. Like you fence your farm because we both need each other we need organic waste from the cattle to grow the crops. And then the cattle need the refuse, like post-harvest uh, residues from the farm to feed their cattle. So we have seminars with farmers to encourage them on how we can live together so that animals don't destroy our crops. And at the same time, we can grow enough crops to feed ourselves. Then secondly, we have issues with monkeys. You know, monkeys come to eat our crops. And interestingly, Monkeys are not afraid of women. When women are in the farms, yeah, when women are in the farms, monkeys are not scared of women. So most of the time, the hunters who have to kill these monkeys, they would dress in women dresses, like in gowns, so that when they're in the farms, when the monkeys are coming, they're able to shoot them and scare them away. Then secondly, we have scarecrows that we put in the farms, like take old clothes, make scarecrows, put them all over the farms. And then the monkeys, when they see the scarecrows, and then they run away. And then interestingly, there are some days in the week that we don't go to the farm. Like it's a resting day for the community. So the monkeys are so smart and they know the particular days that people don't go to the farm and they come to, to destroy the crops on those days. That's how the hunters would dress in women attires to go hunt the monkeys. <laughs> I just imagine the monkeys with their little calendars and they're like, okay, that's their day off. Like, that's the day that we're going to go. That's yeah. really funny. Okay. Um, I, on the next question, I would like to create a garden of my own and grow healthy food. How should I start? So just have a little space in your yard, even if it's just like 20 feet square, and then you get to the nearby uh, organic garden supplies where you can buy some compost manure because I encourage organic gardening. I'm sure you have a lot of garden shops that sells a lot of compost manure. And then you buy your seeds, buy your compost manure, you read through the instructions. And from there, just get your shovel, get your, and then start your garden by nursing the seeds and read the instructions on the package. And you'll be able to grow your own vegetables at your backyard. Really cool. Um, so what this question is from Anonymous again. What project are you working on now, either with water or in the garden? Okay, right now we have political crisis in my country. If you just Google Cameroon political crisis, the Anglophone. So for three years now, I've been unable to go to the villages to work. So right now I am setting up an eco village in my town. So I'm setting up an eco village where we are looking forward to, we are setting up an organic vegetable garden. We've built the eco lodge already. We are looking forward to furnish the eco lodge. And we're looking forward to install a solar system 
to install an animal farm, to install a biogas, build a, a piggery. So that is all what we are doing in the eco village. And we've designed a plan to build a training hall and a resource center so that in future, the eco village and the resource center will be a center that will bring a lot of children in the city to be reconnected back into ecological lifestyles. So that is a project we are currently working on now, developing the Eco Village and Pramatantos Foundation and the Resource Center. Then secondly, we have a project which we just launched in a primary school that I went to, which is about two miles from the Eco Village. And we are looking forward to raise funds to put a water system like a well with a tank so that a children of um, uh, uh, more than 600 children could have access to clean water because they don't have water at all in that primary school. And we have a link for that project, which was designed by the donors in UK. And we are disseminating this link so that people can donate so that we can raise funds for this water project. So these are the two projects I'm working on right now, which is just closer to where I live. That's awesome. You're very busy doing really important work. Okay. Um, can you share one of your favorite memories from your travels doing work for the Save Your Future Association? Oh yeah, I've traveled to more than 22 countries around the world and by 106 flights and I've never paid a dime from my pocket for this flight. So it's so interesting how the world believes in what I am doing. I think one of the best memories is when I met a little child in America who told me who was in, in for, the, for the whole year, he has never read anything in class. He doesn't answer any question that was in Pennsylvania. And because he was traumatized because he comes from a broken home. So when I shared my story, I am farmer. And at the end, the teachers asked uh, children to write a thank you note. And unbelievable, this child for the first time in about six months, he had to write a thank you note to me and telling me my life has changed his life. And from there, the way he looks at the world now is so different. And everybody started crying. All the teachers were crying. Now look at this child could not answer a question in class. Just by reading your story, his life has changed. And that's how I became great friends with this child. And he is now doing a lot in his community. So I felt so motivated and so touched about that. That's extremely touching. And that's why it's important to share stories like this. You never know who's going to connect and who is going to get, you know, a life changing experience from it. Okay. Um, do you have any advice for young people who are discouraged by the lack of global support for sustainability? Um, what are some small ways that they can continue to be involved and feel like they're making a difference? I always share to a lot of young people that our world of today is not a world of certificates. It is the world of what can you do no matter how small. Because I don't have a degree, I don't have a master's, but I believe I have a PhD. And my PhD is based on three principles, persistence, hope, and dedication. So any young person anywhere in the world, wherever you find yourself, just, have, just be persistent just have the hope and be dedicated in whatever thing you are doing. It may seem slow in coming. Your dreams may seem slow in coming to reality, but over time, if you are persistent, it is going to come no matter how long it's going to take. That's great advice. Okay, so how did this book come about? Can you tell us what it was like working with the author and illustrator to write this, to, um, sorry, to bring your story to life? Actually, I had a scholarship from the US Department of State to study in Wisconsin in 2010, 2011. It was a one year program. So while in Wisconsin, I spent most of my time visiting schools and communities to share my story as a volunteer. So one day I met Miranda and Baptiste and they were fascinated about my work. So they told me someday they're gonna share my story in a children's book because the world needs to hear my story. And that is how we started the discussion. And eight years later, they visited me in Cameroon and they were so happy to see my grandmother to hear from her, how I started the movement when I was a little boy. And that is how they cut the story right from my grandmother's village and then up to present for the story to become you know, globally recognized. 
That's really cool. Well, I, I hope I speak for everyone when I'm really happy that you did that scholarship in Wisconsin and that we got this great story out of it. Okay, this is yeah. gonna be the last question for today. Um, what is the most important lesson people can gain from your story? I just believe that we came into this world with nothing and we shall live with nothing. But there's one thing that we can do for the sake of our future generations is to make the world a better place. We should be able to leave a legacy to protect the planet Earth and to make it look better than how we met it. Because it doesn't matter where you come from, you are never too small or insignificant to contribute to the long-term sustainability of our planet. Just by doing very simple things to the best of your ability, you are improving our world. That is really great advice. Thank you so much again, Farmer Tonto. All right, um, we want to give a huge thanks to our audience for supporting our virtual efforts and we look forward to providing you with more fun Disney events soon. We will be continuing to roll out exciting virtual programs. So don't forget to sign up for our e-news and follow us on social media for the latest announcements. And visit our website calendar at waltdisney.org slash calendar for a current schedule of offerings. Additionally, we will be reposting a recording of this event on Monday for anyone who missed it or just can't get enough. The recording will be available to everyone on our Facebook and YouTube pages for 30 days. Members of the museum get the scoop and priority access to all programming, including our virtual programming and extended access to our members only portal, where we will host recordings of our happily ever after hours and story times. Visit us at waltdisney.org slash donate to help support all of our virtual programming through either donations or membership. Thank you for jo joining. We hope you and your loved ones are happy and healthy, and we look forward to seeing you at the museum. And thank you again, Farmer Tonto. Thank you so much, Maya. Thank you, everyone. It was nice meeting all of you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.